All right, guys, so if you're into drones, I know that you have seen different monitors to use. Some of you use your phones, some of you use your tablets. Today, I'm gonna be talking about the DJI Crystal Sky monitors. We've got two of them here. We've got the 5.5 inch, the 7.85 inch. These are the high brightness, not the ultra high brightness because the thing isn't available or it's in super limited quantity. We're gonna go through what these are, their use cases, show you some real world scenarios outside. I have a no-fly zone right now, but I still hooked them up to the Inspire, just didn't take off and had you looking through the camera there just to show you some brightness. Let's get into this. DJI, Crystal Sky, are they worth it? Should you buy one? Why would you or why would you not buy one? Let's get started now. All right, so to break these down overall, these are monitors that are going to be specifically used for your DJI drones. They can be used in everything from the Spark all the way through the Matrice, they hook onto the controller, they connect to the controller through a cable that is in the um, little bracket that you order for it. So to get started, kind of the requirements. You pick a Crystal Sky monitor, you pick the correct bracket, you install that bracket onto your controller, and then you install the monitor onto that bracket and you're ready to go. These are Android based, which I have sort of mixed feelings on. I'm a Phantom 4 Pro Plus owner, which means that I have the controller with the built-in screen. The screen itself is beautiful. It's about this size right here, five and a half inches. It's a thousand nits, just like one of these Crystal Sky monitors. Great screen, but my experience has been less than stellar. My iPhone with DJI Go 4 crashes on occasion, but hardly ever. The, um, the, DJI, Go 4, the DJI Go 4 app on the Android-based Phantom 4 Pro Plus controller crashes a little bit frequently. So I have a little bit of a worry there. These are, again, DJI specific. They are an Android tablet, but they're limited. You can browse the web, you can look at photos, you can do a few other things, but you can't go to the Google Play Store, you can't download apps, you can't use them as a full-blown tablet. So I will tell you right now that if you have a phone or a tablet that you are completely happy with, there's no reason to buy these unless you're always in the sun, find yourself using a sunshade. You almost don't have to use a sunshade with these in any conditions. I've used the 7.85 inch quite a bit now. Um, I love the brightness. I will tell you that personally, I am using one of these, but my use case is that I want a very bright monitor. I want it integrated into the controller for the most part. I want it to be rock solid. I want long battery life with multiple batteries so they don't have to charge the tablet. So these are powered by an external battery. So I can just swap batteries in as I'm running low and not have to try and charge something. And then beyond that, I want a fantastic screen. So I'm using the 7.85 inch, which we're gonna get into. So let me run through a few things on these to show you what they are. They're made out of this kind of uh, industrial type plastic. It looks like metal, it's not, these are all plastic, but it's a really high grade kind of industrial, high impact type plastic. The, um, the seven inch is 2048 by 1536 for resolution. They're both IPS LED screens, so great screens. 599 for the 7.85 inch, I believe 499 for the 5.5 inch. They are 1000 nits. As a comparison, the iPhone 7 Plus and the iPhone 8 is about 705 nits. So this is about 44% brighter and you'll see that. And the Tab S2, which has been my tablet that I've used for a long time, is 420 nits, about two and a half times brighter this Crystal Sky is in the Tab S2. That you can see a huge difference of. Both of these monitors have two micro SD ports. For the 5.5 inch, they're on the bottom. For the 7.85 inch, they're on the left-hand side. You have a full-size HDMI port on the side, and that's fantastic. A lot of times when I'm flying, and I'm working as an operator, like as a single operator, so I'm operating the drone and the camera, but I'm doing this on a commercial shoot, the person that's watching the director, the director of photography, whoever it is, they want to see something besides my screen. So I can run a full HDMI out to their director's monitor and then they can watch everything there. They can give me some direction. On the Sendence controller, you've got an SDI out, which is what they usually use for like a Sony or a Panasonic 17 inch field monitor. But here you've got a full size HDMI out, which means you don't need any clunky adapters or to go from a mini or a micro to a full size HDMI. Just go HDMI out to a field monitor or to a separate recorder if you want, no, no need to really. But out to a separate monitor so that the person that's there, your client or whoever can see live what you're shooting and get an idea. If we don't have a 17 inch monitor, I'll hand my Ninja Flame off to the person that I'm working with, throw a battery on that thing, HDMI to it, add them HDR and they can see a beautiful image and I still have my flat file that I'm recording so that I can do as much as I want to in post. On the bottom, there's a USB-C port. That is what actually connects on the adapter on the holder that is connected to the controller that then goes into the controller. Um, overall, it weighs about a pound. 
The external battery goes for between three and five and a half hours. On full brightness, I'm getting close to four hours every time, and I haven't let it go all the way down. I'm charging it, but after about a half day, I'm recharging it, and I've got three batteries, so I can just go for a day and a half if I want. That, to me, is one of the biggest things on here. The quality of the screen, the external batteries, is key for me running all day long and not having to worry about power at all. A lot of times I might get out there and I'm using my phone, but then I've got to get phone calls as well, so that's not a good solution. I'm using my tablet, but then on my tablet, I'm worried about battery and having to charge up. So now, external batteries, fantastic solution. Let's go now to the buttons that are on the front. On the right-hand side, start at the top, you've got a power button. Then you've got a customizable F1 button. Until you customize that, when you hit it, it goes back to its home screen. Then below that, you've got a settings button, the middle one down. That settings button will get you really quick to Wi-Fi settings, to volume, to brightness controls. F2, again, customizable. That button will, again, take you back to the home screen until you customize it. And then at the bottom, you've got a menu or a return button. One thing that I really like about this monitor, I'm gonna show you this right now, the integration with the controller, is that when I turn on the controller, like I'm going to right now, you'll see it, you hear it, this just buzzed, now you're gonna see the DJI logo, and it's gonna power on. It just powers on from the monitor, one button. Now when you power off, you've gotta power it off. So we'll just go ahead and let it come up really quick, so you can get an idea. So right there you can see, I'll run through kind of some of the buttons. Here's the settings button. So if I hit this, it's going to go to settings. I can do a screenshot, I can flip the screen 180, I can adjust the volume here, I can adjust the, um, the uh, brightness, so you can see I can bring it way down, I can bring it way up. You can see it says that it has 78% in five hours and 27 minutes. And then F1 and F2, I can click right here and change them to what I want. So I could just make F1 a screenshot button, and when I press this F1 button, it's just gonna take a screenshot. Um, I can go home on the Android tablet, go to applications, I've got gallery, browser, downloads. This is basically what you have for the Android tablet. In here, this is what you can see as far as brightness goes, as far as the screen goes. You can see the five and a half is much smaller. So the screen on the five and a half is about the same size as the iPhone 7 or 8 Plus. If you have a five and a half inch phone and you're happy using that and you don't need the long life battery, I would not recommend buying this one. I actually wouldn't recommend buying this one at all unless space is of a premium to you. At only like a hundred bucks more or so, go with the 7.85 inch, you're gonna be so much happier and it's actually a really great monitor. They're both great monitors, the touchscreen works really well. The 7.85 is so much bigger and so much better um, as far as usability goes for you to be able to hit the buttons or to change your focus or whatever you want. This is the one that you should go with. I don't even really know why they made this, except that this is lighter on something like a Mavic or um, as a Spark controller or something like that. But beyond that, I don't really get the use case for this one. So we've got that. Let's dig into what comes in the packages. So both packages are very similar. I'm not gonna go through a whole unboxing because you guys have seen a billion unboxings. I'm just gonna tell you what's in the package. So you have the two Crystal Skies. In both of them, you get the same charger. It's a dual battery charger. It hooks into the AC adapter that you use to charge your batteries for your current drone, and then it can charge two batteries at one time. They pop in, they eject out. It's as simple as that. Um, you've got a button on here. This button right here is to mute it, so when it's done charging, it's got an alarm, or you can mute that alarm, and it's got a USB out for charging your controller or whatever. Um, the 5.5 inch comes with one battery. The 7.85 comes with two batteries. They come with an instruction manual, and they're encased. That's all that there is in these. To hook these up, you can see on here, this controller now, you've got a special bracket here. That comes in this box, about 79 bucks, I think. This was the controller mounting bracket for the Inspire 2. You buy one of these for your particular controller. It's got an integrated cable that goes into the back of your controller. So with this bracket, you're no longer worried about a micro USB cable or a lightning cable or whatever. It's just integrated into it and that's it. So super easy to take the monitor off. You have this little lever right here in the front. You just pull that and the monitor slides right off. It's got a, basically a tongue here that goes into the back of the ports right here and then the USB right here, and that's it. So this bracket comes with this mounting bracket. You mount this right on here with two screws. That couldn't be simpler. You take this off with two screws, this one screw right here, one screw on the side, that pops off. This one goes in with the same screws that you used. Takes one minute, anybody can do it. Takes a flathead screwdriver, comes with a flathead screwdriver so you don't even have to buy tools. But if you don't own a flathead screwdriver, get yourself to Home Depot and go buy a little screwdriver set, Allen key set, everything that you need, 10 bucks, go get some tools. Um, but beyond that, that's it. Um, flathead screwdriver, it comes with it. And then this just slides right on like so. 
close it down, and it's on there, it's solid. You can change the tension with this screw right here so that you can change the angle. I've got it laid all the way back right now so that you can see it on this overhead, but generally I have the angle up a little bit, and that's all that there is to it. So let's get outside. We're going to turn these on, and I'll show you the differences between this, an iPhone, and the Tab S2. And we'll come back, I'll give you my final thoughts. All right guys, so now I wanna do a little bit of a real world test. Can I show you outside what this looks like? I have direct daylight that's gonna be coming onto the screen. So you can see the Inspire 2 in the background here. Now we're in a no-fly zone, so we can't take off, but I wanna show you the screens here. So first we're gonna start with the 7.85 Crystal Sky screen. You can see it here. Now keep in mind, this is in direct daylight with reflections and everything. So you're, what you're actually seeing is my reflection coming off of the Shogun monitor. But if we come up here, you can see how we've got basically everything here. Um, if I run you through really quick what we have, if you press this button here, you get the settings, like I said, that's quick settings to go to like screen dimming, to go to Wi-Fi, to go to, go to some other things. So I don't know how well it's gonna come across on the screen here, but what I can tell you is that in the direct sun, I have the direct sun on here. I have no issues whatsoever seeing this. I wouldn't need a sun hood. Everything looks great. It's a great size. You can see the size of my hand here, the size of the controller, you know, beside it. Um, you know, if we get a little bit far away, you can see here, but fantastic screen. Um, easily, this is better than an iPad mini or my Samsung Tab S2. And the size of it makes it way better than like a Samsung S8 or an iPhone 8 Plus, which I'm going to show you here in just a second. So the iPhone 8 Plus and the tablet's going to be a little bit kludgy to show you here because I'm going to hold them on top. But I just wanted to give you an example here of how it looks. The next two that you're going to see are going to be without the controller in here. So I'm just going to basically attach a cable to here and show you what they are. This is the Samsung Tab S2, and I'm trying to get it so that you can really see the uh, screen. So you can clearly see it's not nearly as bright as the Crystal Sky. Um, and this screen, the Crystal Sky monitor isn't a matte screen, but it doesn't seem to have the same reflections, you know, that this does. But the screen is 100% up, and you can see a huge difference between it and the Crystal Sky. Let me just grab the Crystal Sky because it's paused on the screen and pull it right next to this so that you can see you know, how big of a difference it is. So here we've got the two of them side by side, almost the same size. You can see, no matter what the angle is, um, the Crystal Sky is night and day above the Samsung Tab S2. And this is the iPhone 8 Plus. So I'm having a little bit of problems with um, it actually connecting to the craft, but this is the DJI Go app, so I want to show you this is an auto edit video that was on here, and you can see, while I think that this looks better than the Samsung Tab S2 did, that um, it's still not nearly as bright as the Crystal Sky Monitor is. And the iPhone 8 is about, I wanna say 725 nits, where the uh, DJI Crystal Sky is 1,000. So you can see, I mean, quite a bit of difference here. We're holding them in the same plane. Uh, you know, the iPhone 8 actually does, still does pretty well. Like, I can see it pretty clearly in the sun, but that Crystal Sky monitor size-wise, and then really just size-wise for me, you know, this is, this is a great little controller for your DJI uh, drone, but I like the size of this Crystal Sky. You know, it's the size of my tablet, but a lot brighter than the tablet. So that's really it overall. In the sun, kind of real world look at it, you know, what you see. All right guys, so final thoughts. Who is this for? If you are somebody that uses Leechy or um, or autopilot or some other third-party app on your phone or on your tablet or your device that you're currently controlling your drones with, this is not for you at this point. Uh, there are companies like Drone Deploy and others that are working with DJI through their software development kit to develop custom apps for this, but as it is right now, this is just a very limited Android tablet, no access to the Google Play Store or the ability to sideload uh, apps as it works right now. So if you rely on third-party apps, this is absolutely not a solution for you. Do not waste your money. I just use the DJI app, that is it. So for me, this is exactly the right size, a 7.85 inch. I wouldn't want anything bigger than this. Um, all of the connectivity out from it is great. It has 64 gigs of memory built in for the cache, one thing I didn't talk about. The five and a half, 32 gigs. The 7.85, 64 gigs. The 7.85 ultra high brightness is gonna have 128 gigs of memory. That's for your video cache. If you need more, you have the micro SD cards here. So plenty of memory, plenty of storage here. And for me, the usability of it, I can be in the brightest of bright daylight and not have to use a sun hood. And for me, that's awesome. That means it doesn't matter where I turn my body, nothing. I don't have to worry about the sun and I can see it all the time with this. I haven't had a situation yet where I've had to worry about being able to see the screen. I can't say the same for that with the tablet or my iPhone in other situations. So overall, um, it's a don't buy on the five and a half. I just don't really see a use for it if you already have a phone or tablet that you're happy with. 
just the price difference is too small to really make this worth it. Totally a buy on the 7.85, especially at 599. It's not that expensive for a great investment for something that's gonna last for a while. So if you have any questions or if you've used this at all, let me know below, leave me a comment, subscribe if you haven't, throw a like over there so that a lot of other people see this. And then tell me what you think. Do you like the DJI Crystal Sky Monitor? If you do, great. If you don't, let me know what you don't like about it. Yes, yeah, so that is it, guys. So thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate all of you guys watching. Um, kind of keeps me going, keeps me motivated to make more content. So thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And I will talk to you guys soon. See ya.